Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Straightforward Farming Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Reed, alongside Nick McCormick, as always. What's going on, Nick? We're back. We're back. You don't know how many times we've tried to shoot this podcast. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> off the charts. I At least eight or nine, at least. At least. In our defense, we have good intentions. We, we come have. over here. We're going to pregame a little bit, make sure we get our everything aligned, and then people show up, and then we get sidetracked. We we shoot a podcast, we just don't record it. Exactly. But exactly. here we are, killing it. Now we, we're actually going to do it. We're recording yep. this one. You're here, we're here, everybody's here, and we have a special guest we tonight. We do. Once again, we're standing there drinking beer, and somebody shows somebody up. Somebody shows up. Bang. Here so we are. Like, tonight, we're putting our foot down. You're going to be on the yep. fucking podcast yep. with us. Here you are. So we're here with Mr. Matt Forkham. He's one of these... Real estate guys kind of likes to screw people on the back side. Yeah, pretty much the uh, Donald Trump of real yes, estate in our is. area. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah. Go ahead and say hi. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was reluctant to be on this podcast, but we yeah. didn't give him a lot of choices. Exactly. He had no clue what he was getting into. Yeah. But that's it's pretty right. much sit down or. <clears throat> don't, but the options are not good. Yeah. So yep. Yeah. Exactly. Do you need more paper? To write on, you've got just a little bit there. No, thank you. I'm okay, good. you're good. Yeah, right. You're all good. Okay. I feel prepared. Okay. Thanks. Feel free to okay. jump in at any time. Yeah, nothing is off limits here. You can say yeah. whatever you want. Or as unfiltered as it gets. Exactly. About five microns. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. All right. So here it is, soaking wet, Central Illinois. I didn't even look. I've had close to an inch of rain today. Got More on the way. Today. Yep. Virtually no farming done been in this area. Virtually just very very little. We planted eighty acres of beans. Over two weeks ago now. They're yeah. up, but that's it. Yeah. Who knew? Should have kept going then. Exactly. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. But yeah. we're kind of all in the same boat, though, because I think everybody I knew planted a little bit and yeah. stopped. And that was it. Because it, was, it wasn't was looking good. And it's no. like, well, we'll wait, and it's going to be better. And it really hasn't got better. There's as many guys who haven't planted anything as yeah. what there is who've planted just a little bit and stopped. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So... I don't know. So you want to talk real estate, Matt? Let's talk yeah, real estate. What, what I mean, do you want to talk about, yeah, Matt? You got any deals on the table you're trying to screw anybody on? or <laughs> Yeah. What's going on there? Some some widows or <laughs> yeah. any, any, any ground you're trying to steal? Where, where are yeah. you at here? Yeah. What do you guys want to know? I want to know, do you really think, and, that, and I'm just going to throw out a fair, let's just say a good piece of farmland around here, it, it's realistic to bring twelve or 15,000 an acre. That's not off the table. I mean, I don't think it's off the table. I think, uh, you know, for, for around here being this township, being within 100 miles, we're, what are we talking about? Like very yeah, hyper-local like, where yeah, we're at. Like, yep. <clears throat> the 12, 15,000 an acre, I think, uh, you know, you've got to have a, 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 some events that kind of align to command that price point. Sure. Right, you know, but... Uh, it's it's uh, not out of the question. I don't think so it's out of the question. The no. question I have for you is, will I look back in 20 years and say, man, I could have bought that for 15,000 an acre, and now it's 35. Sure. You think so? Yeah, I do. Okay, I do. That's a that's what a good realtor would say to yeah, anybody. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. What a good no, realtor no. would say. Yeah. A great you realtor follows that up by saying, "Just sign here." Oh yeah, that's true. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, well, we can make that happen. Yeah, it's like land hit hyperinflation though. I mean, I remember yeah. in 08, like you know, it went to seven thousand acre, and people were just like having a stroke. And I mean. It's yeah. like we skipped all the way through 8, 9, and 10. It yeah. just immediately went to 12, 15, even gets up to 20 on a very rare. Okay, you know, that's not the norm, but it, it's happened. Yeah. yeah. Farmers are quick, quick to the punch. They are. They don't hold back. Yep, they are. Yeah. Yep. So do you do any social media, Matt? Do you, got any, do you get on TikTok? Like, do you have a, like your reality page? Like you yeah. get on there and like. Facebook is our, our kind of our dominant messaging platform. Copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not a lot of time. I'm not, I'm not well versed in the TikTok. So, so you're catering to the old folk. Okay. Yep. Old people now, have money. Now pull, pull that mic, pull that mic down true. closer to you. So you look, you look okay. uncomfortable. Yeah. Get, yeah. Just, well, go, ahead and, go ahead and just put it right in there. He's Fucking got a, he's got a chair over here. Yeah, he's kind he's, of a husky he's, fella. He's, he's, he's <laughs> reluctant. He's reluctant to participate. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to take your business to the next level. Yeah, I believe that. I trust you. Yeah. No, that's a sketchy decision, but hey, it's your choice. It'll either make you or break you. Yeah, either way. Yeah, we can delete this when we're done. I mean, yeah. we're not going to. You're, exactly. you're on either way. But, you know. For the right price, we would. Yeah. You can be our first sponsor. The first one that paid us to delete a podcast. Yeah. There you go. Here we are. Trendsetter. Anyway. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, what else has been going on, Tony? Anything exciting? Nothing, really. I mean, just when it rains and pours every three days, it just kind of set yeah, back and I hear you. don't do anything. I hear you. Yeah. Yep. How about you, Matt? What's going on in your world outside of the realty business? I'm Tell us me. what's new in, the, in, in your life or the yeah. real, real estate business. Yeah. Because there's, there's things changing in the real estate business currently, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's evolving every day. Well, go ahead and lay some of that on us. Elaborate? Yeah. Yes. Elaborate. Okay. Yes. I'm yeah. happy to elaborate, Nick. Thanks. There you go. Thank you for asking. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> uh, real estate, uh, I guess I can talk a little bit. Real estate is, is facing, and residential real estate, facing some very interesting stuff right now. Uh, apparently... Uh, according to some lawsuits that were that were filed in uh, Kansas City, realtors have been have been screwing people over, and that's you know, goddamn, that's news to me. So, are you listed in the real or in the uh, lawsuit? <laughs> <laughs> not personally, yeah, no. Okay, no, okay, not, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which I actually did see here mm. a month ago. Whatever it was, you know, there was a whole gamut of laws, and and some of them was even. Um, the uh, not the, is not the non disclosure, but what, what's the non compete clauses? Like yeah. you can't do that anymore. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, yeah. So FT, FTC uh, prohibits uh, non compete stuff now. Which, yeah, I saw that. <clears throat> what sparked all that? I mean, that's been law for ever. It seemed like I don't know. I think we're, I think we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, regulation by uh, by executive authority. You know, with that kind of stuff. Not to go off the political yeah. tangent here, but yeah. We can. We yeah, don't we, mind. Yeah, we don't it, mind. It goes here. Where, where you want to go? Yeah. Well, this is fun. You lead, we'll follow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, we can we can debate that. Uh, have you fun. seriously <laughs> never listened to one of our podcasts? I've seriously never listened to one of our podcasts. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, see, I'm an support. absolute podcast yeah. virgin. Yeah, thanks yeah. for the support, but you're also being a little <laughs> sheepish here. I mean, it, yeah. Don't hold back. Yeah. Anything goes here. Go ahead and tell us what, what has sparked some of these lawsuits, et cetera, et cetera, in the real estate world. Okay, okay, I can do that. So the real estate lawsuits, in a nutshell, uh, kind of the way residential real estate has worked generally and historically is for a seller to pay a commission to a real estate company, and that real estate company then to offer a portion of that commission to uh, a realtor that would be what we call cooperating compensation. So, you know, I'm, I've got Tony's house for sale and you're a real estate agent, Nick, and you you bring a buyer, we're yeah. going to share a portion of what Tony's putting the money in the bucket. We're going to share a portion of the money out of the bucket with you for, for the work you're doing to help facilitate the deal. And that, um, uh, according to this lawsuit, is, is um, anti-competitive and uh, creates a, a collusive environment and so forth. And so there's, there's a lot of struggle with that. And so I think it's really going to change the dynamic of how realtors are compensated. And uh, and it does affect realtors being a being a term for members of the National Association of Realtors. So it's a trade organization. I think it's going to really impact the way our business looks. I can see that. Yep, I really do. I and so and and I guess don't say anything that you could incriminate yourself on here because I'm just asking because I don't know. So let's just say that you're a realtor. I list my house with you, and I think that I'm doing business with Matt Forkham. Yep. And then you pick up the phone and you call your buddy who's a realtor three towns over. And you're like, hey, I just got this listing. And then he brings somebody to the table. Is that kind of what you're saying? That is is yeah. that what goes on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm obviously, you know, I'm not an attorney, and I, I haven't, you know, read every page of the lawsuit transcript and the, the testimony and so forth. But, you know, I think that's that's really the premise of the deal is, is you know, you thought you were paying me something and and didn't realize that something else was getting paid. And conversely, on the buyer's side, Nick, if, if you come and you're you're buying the house, who's really paying that, right? right. It's like the buyer's premium at the auction sale. Who's who's, who's paying it? Because the, the seller is paying it on paper, Right, the sellers the sellers are paying commission on paper, but the buyer is yeah. the only one bringing the cash to the table. So who's who's really you know yeah yeah financing the 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 cost of doing business, if you will. So yeah, I, I think it's going to be. Um, but somebody's got to get paid. There's work being done there. Somebody's got to get paid for it. Sure, sure. can do it for free. So do you think it'll go to like a flat fee or? I think we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of interesting models. I think we're going to see a lot of evolution. A short amount of time. I think we'll see some really good innovation happen. I think it'll make the industry stronger, make it better. And, I mean, uh, that brings me to another point. Look at the shit that we've seen just in the last six months that is once in a lifetime deal. We've had eclipses. We got fucking yeah. cicadas coming. We got real estate changing. I mean, it's, it's what, a right to, what a time what to be alive. What a time to live. I mean, yeah. this is just unbelievable. Yeah. Just we got a guy that literally can't walk, talk, or chew bubble gum leading the whole world. Yeah. And here we are, enjoying all of it. It's going great. I love it. <laughs> he Hyperinflation. Just, he don't know what to say. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. Uh, he's not really used to us yet, but we're going to yeah. break him in. Yeah, that's Today's right. Today's the day. That's right. Yep. Yeah. 
Nick, so yeah, I'm, I'm used to doing a lot of things with Nick, just never with an audience. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. And that's for true. the IRS, we don't exchange cash. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, nope, we're all good there. Not a taxable event, as we yeah. would say. I'm a cashless purchase, <laughs> purchase point. <laughs> Card uh, only. So, so do you think this whole real estate deal is good or bad for the industry? Would you I, rather I, just leave it like it is? or I think it's good for the industry. I mean, change always happens, right? Mm -hmm. Evolution yep. is always going to happen. The world's turning every day right around us, and I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to make our practitioners stronger. Uh, I think it, it it's going to be, uh, we're going to be more clear to our customers in, in how we're doing business, who we're working with, who our customers uh, have on, on their on their team, if you will, and uh, and more more clear on how the money moves. So it's, it's definitely going to change the way we're accustomed to doing this, but... Uh, but I think it'll be healthy. From what little bit I know, it seems like to me like it's going to be the same amount of money, but it's going to be more defined on who's doing what for what money. Am I wrong there? I, I don't know that you're wrong. Potentially, it, it, it could be. Uh, potentially, it could be a totally different um, price point for this yeah. stuff. And that goes to the, the innovation piece of I think we're going to see a lot of different different models sprout up. So, like, what do you like, like? Give me an example. Like, what do you what do you think? Something that, that could happen, and we're just shooting from the hip. Like, what do you think would change? I mean, I think you'll see an advent of, of flat fees or, or maybe you know d discounts uh, on on w what's been paid in the past. Uh, you know, maybe maybe folks getting more competitive on price. Uh, we're, we're seeing nationally a pretty strong compression of housing inventory. Right, we don't have a ton of houses now. Interest rates have slowed that down a little bit. Buyers are buying. A little bit less sellers are less inclined to sell their house and go from their two and a half mortgage to a, a six and a half percent mortgage. Yeah. So inventory is kind of staying parked. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that I have the crystal ball here, but but I do know the change is definitely happening. You know, it's it's happening around us. And, and I think those firms that struggle with evolution are going to struggle with survival. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think. The last time I dealt with a realtor, when we bought this farm, I just bought it individually with the guy who owned it, but we sold our other house through a realtor. Would around 6% been right back then, 6.5%? You're, you're, what, you're, what, you paid? You're, you're probably in the ballpark there, yeah. Okay, I, I couldn't remember. I, that yeah, would have been I in 2000. Clearly didn't hire you, but you know what I mean? Well, this was 2016. He was still, business, Tony. Yeah, he was still excavating. <laughs> he wouldn't endorse the podcast. You know, I mean, yeah. I, he had, that's just the way it goes. He's not even yeah, exactly. We're not going to use him tomorrow. He didn't even listen to us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Strangers huh? listen to us, but not you. It's okay, man. It's yeah. all right. We're, we're cool yeah, with it. This podcast brought to you by Century 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> the more you know. Anyway, yeah, I, I could see some big industry changes there. I have used realtors in the past for a lot of things. My, it's been a slow progression for me to move, move my wife south. But I've got it here now, and we have used realtors in the past um, very successfully. It's all been pleasant. Um, out of your territory, Matt. But, I, I uh, feel really blessed. I just want to say, Nick, I, I feel blessed to have been able to sell your house, even though, you know. You did sell my house on the backside, you. like not really for me, but it was my house at one yeah, time. At one and there, I missed that house in a lot of levels. Yeah. I missed that house. I don't miss the location. I do miss the location because there was no traffic. Yeah. But if it could have been closer to Tony's like I am now, it would have been way handier for us to hang out. Yeah, yeah. added just, bonus. But pick the houses I, up and swap them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I missed I missed the property. I missed the house. It lived easy. The house lived so easy. I of course, that. who are we shitting, Matt? I mean, he literally bought a Jeff Bezos house yeah. now. Uh -huh. I mean, it, this thing's mongo. <laughs> oh well, paying those taxes. <laughs> yeah. But it was, you know, built by some hodgepodge carpenter in 1985. <laughs> yeah. It might be Tony's dad. Who knows? Yeah. But... You know, it's built really well, but it's taxed through the roof, and yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of hey, that. You got you to pay for quality, man. Yeah, it is quality. You know, it, it is way more quality than the house that I had. I'm not saying it's not. It's just way more house than I need, but there I am because I wanted to go to my home school district or want my kids to go to there. I'm not going again. And then like, even though I should, advantage. there's some stuff I didn't learn. But yeah. Small school advantage. But then they co-opt yeah. anyway. So yeah, I said, yeah, I should have stayed. Look at the amount of money it, you pissed away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> About 150 grand here, as yep. I can tell. Yeah, yep. she just stayed. Been less miles to drive. Does that hurt? Like kidney stones? Like is there a sensation pissing out 150 thousand dollars? Well, it's not so much all at once, but it's a slow drain a every dribble. month. Yeah, yep. yeah it's just kind of yeah, yeah. You'll have that on those. Yeah, I could have just yep. stayed. Yeah, yep. So yep. Matt used to be an excavator back in the day. Or, yeah, I mean, your dad still 
Is he retired or still? Pretty, pretty well fully retired. Still got some equipment flowing around, but yeah, he's okay. pretty well done. Tell us about your excavation days. Yeah. Oh, they were great. You're, you're a cat man. You're a yellow guy. Yep, yep, for sure. All yellow. Your yeah. dad was yellow from way back. Yeah, dad Dad retired from the Caterpillar factory, um, the shop floor, and he uh, he's actually, I think, maybe second cousins with Randy Lewis, who was the guy that yeah. got out, you know. Yep. <clears throat> who was the guy around here. Who was here. the guy for around here and then for quite a ways. Yeah. And, uh, and Randy, when Randy was getting ready to sell... Um, Dad had thought about he was going to retire from cat, and he always wanted to build a pond on some acreage. And he said, and, and so my dad had worked for Randy when Cat was on some some sabbaticals. Stri- sabbaticals. There you go. Yeah, um, yeah. So he had, he'd run some equipment, and he said, "Well, I just you know I'll go buy the dozer and I can run it and I'll fuel it and flip it when I'm done, build the pond." And uh, that turned into a conversation with another guy that had worked for Randy Dale Navis had, had worked there for yeah. years and years and, and Dale's a great guy and uh, long story short they ended up uh, we ended up starting two excavating companies and and we yeah. walked out of Lewis's auction with uh, uh, shoot two bulldozers and track hoe and semi and a dump truck and a whole bunch of stuff you know so yeah um, I <clears throat> uh, got into being a bulldozer mechanic literally overnight with a cat part book from from the auction at a craftsman tool set there you go there it was you know i can tell you this much from working on my dozer this winter with jeff bame here in the shop oh yeah that there's nothing easy about working on dozers and nothing clean about working on dozers anything that you got to drain or whatever else it just goes all over you yep you're rolling around underneath there and just literally soaked in oil from the time you start to the time you quit nothing easy about it does not look fun to me Uh, but matt loved it he He did. did he loved it that's good stuff. I mean, you, you know, the far end of an 80, pushing dirt, middle of July, nobody comes out, taps you on the shoulder. No, and, your phone ain't ringing. You if it is, anything. you can't yeah. hear it. You're good. You're <laughs> not, with, not within the next year and a half to two years, there probably won't be a single tree left on my property because that's how I do it. I get on mine. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to clean this little spot up over here. I'm like, well, that looks so good. But now it looks awkward because this is kind of growing around that. So then you just keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. And yeah, so pretty soon I'm just going to have. A few big giant trees left, and that's about it. It's pretty, uh, pretty much going to be Brazilian acres here. Yes, <laughs> yes, clean as nice a whistle, manicured. Yeah, yep. Well clean, well cleaned. Yeah, yeah. Seems very sporty. You know how yep. many trees you need on a farm? Zero is the Zero. number you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that. I like them in my yard. I don't need them around. I, my I'm farm. a prairie dweller. I like to see far. Yeah. Well, newsflash, ass hat. You moved <laughs> in the middle of a state forest. I know. So. <laughs> So, so you might clear your property off, but right. you're still going to look about 50 feet. But, right. hey, you know, whatever. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, yeah better but, get a taller ladder there. Exactly. Yeah, I tell my right. wife every day, that's the only thing I hate about this. I can't see, I can only see about a quarter, I can see a quarter mile east and west, nothing to the north and a long way to the south. And I want I want every tree cut within a mile radius of my house. All if, of them. Ground you, cut, clear If cut. you see the Tower of Babylon going up. <laughs> it's me. It's Tony. <laughs> yep. Putting it up. Yep, I'm gonna have the only skyscraper in Clarksburg Township. <laughs> there you on go. the top floor. There you go. Gotta have goals. That's yeah. right. Life goals. Yep. So what else is new? Anything? I mean, not too much. Not mm-hmm. too much. No. This is. Uh, I'm on a podcast. That's new. Yeah. That's new. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to listen to him. Now you're on one. Yeah. yeah. If I've you never... tell me that you listen to this one next week without listening to one prior, I'm kicking you right square in the ass. Because you need a basis for comparison. Okay. Yeah. Just saying. There's been a few. We've got really drunk and didn't remember what the hell we talked about. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then, least... I get, then I get the phone call. Man, you were so right on your podcast. I'm like, hmm. about what? And the guy was like, oh, you talked about this? We did? All right, cool. So we, we kind of we kind of veer. Here in a minute, we're going to get off on a tangent on the World War II. Yeah. So and old trucks and old tractors, because that's kind of what we do. Okay. Yep. So. Just get your we, thoughts going on. Yeah, that. we generally just go all the way around the yeah. horn. All the way around, around the world. Yep. Okay. So we've covered real estate and how you're, you know, cheating widows and kids out of their family inheritance. But, you know, yep. neither. It's neither here nor there. Now, you're also an auctioneer, right? Yeah, you yeah. auctioneer. So, yes. but you are you don't do like estate sales. Like, you're not selling couches and cookie jars, are you? Or are you? We, we do, uh, as it relates to, to real estate sales, it's a solution that we've really designed to say if you know if we've got the house the house is usually the biggest single asset yep. and then you've got stuff in the house we see it a lot with estates uh, especially estates that may have out of state relatives or something it's just difficult to manage personal property so we've we've done that for several clients where we've stepped in and 
kind of configured an operation to, to monetize a personal property, you know, donate and, and, uh, and, and dispose of other stuff as needed. And it's, it's worked out really well. So we do that. We focus exclusively on online auctions. That's really? the, yep. That's the, that's the direction. Really so, sense. which, so like, if I want to do an online auction, I still got to be a licensed auctioneer though, right? Even though I'm not banging a gavel, talking fast in front of people, like, like literally, if I had the software, Nick and I could have an online auction to auction yeah. off this computer and this printer and this table and this desk, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And right. nobody would know the difference. Yeah, absolutely. But Didn't you talk fast? That's kind of what he's getting at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can. I can. And, in, and I don't. I, I, honestly, I don't enjoy it. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I love going to a live auction. I just don't, I mean, I'd rather watch it. I don't like. Okay. I, I do miss. I don't like doing it. Live. Uh, online auctions are way handier. I do yeah. love that part, but I do miss. I miss live the auctions. in-person auction. Yeah. yeah. So I could really go either way on that. I mean, yeah. yeah. And the in-person auction, I mean, the, the live auction, the, the, the historical, right, the Strasburg Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock shade tree mm-hmm. auction sale, right? All the shit's on the rack wagon. It's, you know, yeah. people have been milling around since yeah. 6.30 in the morning, you know, yep. pilfering through stuff and whatever. And what a, just, a, just a social. Casually you know. rearranging the boxes to their benefit. <laughs> yeah. Why nobody's looking. And you Absolutely. think, I'm going to give 20 bucks for that hydraulic jack right there. But then once you get in the heat of the battle, you go to 35. Nobody wants to be beat. You always exactly. want to win. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I do miss the live auction, but the online is way, way, way easier. Well, I do like that. Depending on the auctioneer, you may not know that you're actually in the bidding, so you just you well, know, what the hell? True. Let's, let's get going. I've a few of those. I say, do, you guys have, do you have ghost bidders attend yeah. your auctions? Or? Yeah. I mean, just, just like, we're not going to tell nobody. Just to do it. <laughs> tell me you're looking at the software, and my minimum, minimum bid's always going to be what I get it for, you know, regardless. Yeah. You know, yeah. Do, do you know of any auctioneers that have actually got hung with like big, big items that ghost bid? I do. Do you really? Yeah. That'd be yeah. a weird feeling. Yeah. On some on some large large things. I've heard some stories about a very very large auction company who got stuck with a very very large tract of land yeah. by ghost bidding. Yeah. But I'm not going to mention any names. Me but. either. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't either. But. Sounds sketchy, but Matt's not into that. He's he's all in yeah, the up and up. He, he is. We, I have stuff in my shop that purchased off one of his online auctions. Yep, there you go. I do. Yep. Now, now actually, I'm going to catch some flack for this because I'm good buddies with Trent Schmid, who's like the premier auctioneer in the area. Yeah, I like Trent. Yep, yeah. and so now I've got his competitor on the podcast. So. Yeah, well, it's Trent's fault for not yeah. showing up. So we might, have to see if, by. we might have to see if Trent will pay us not to air this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I we'll don't see. I don't think I'm hurting his bottom line. I don't. I Is don't, that right? I don't yeah. think we're really going head to head on a lot of no, stuff. No, you're not in the yeah. same market. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I get it. No, yeah. I've always said though, an auctioneer selling land, and I'm talking land where you're not carrying shit out of a house for three days, but selling land, that actually is pretty good money. I mean, I'm not saying they don't deserve it. Don't misunderstand me. I mean, that's pretty good money with land prices doing what they've done. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, it's different when lands three hundred dollars an acre and you get a yeah. percent or two to print a few flyers. But yeah, I mean it doesn't it doesn't take you know much percent of the pie. It you know when you start you start selling the million dollar increments. Yeah, yeah. To you know to be money Absolutely. ahead. Yep, and and especially if you structure it, you know where that maybe that customer is also fronting the cost of advertising or, or some of your other overhead. Right, is sure. isn't coming out of that commission. Yeah. Uh, Definitely laid up in the pocket pretty quick. It, it's kind of surprising, though, around here, how many auctioneers there are for really no more live auctions. Yeah, than what there are. You know, many. I yeah. I couldn't tell you the last live auction, that I, like a farm sale that I'd been to. I mean, it's been years and years and years. Well, yeah. a couple more years of Joe Biden's America, there'll be more of them. Well, that's true. Yeah, there'll be some more if you can afford to put your hand in the air. No. Oh. No we'll, doubt. we'll do like the old the old eighties movie. No sale, no sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah, good times. Yeah, that's for sure. Auctions are fun, but if you're not willing to stick your neck out there, you can end up just wasting a day. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You stand there all day for five minutes that that's the only item I'm after. And you don't get it. Sending my dad and my brother to an auction is it's Complete waste of time. I mean, obviously, I mean, my dad can't go anymore, but back you know, when I would send him, he get he would eventually say the hell with it. He'd come home. My brother would get frustrated by the whole process. He'd leave. I'm like, what? 
I thought we had an agreement. We're going to give this for that. Well, I the, wanted to leave and it hadn't sold yet. Now, the only time I ever went to an auction with your dad, we bought a polar tractor. Remember that? We went, yes. to, buy, we went to buy a 1206, mm-hmm. I think, for your uncle. Mm-hmm. And there was a guy, and, and there was, there was like, it was just a bunch of old antique tractors. And yeah. some guy from the polling world seen this auction, so he put his polling tractor on the auction. But didn't buy it on the auction, but it after the right. auction. We had yeah. to stop at Dairy Queen for ice cream, Absolutely. naturally. Absolutely. But your dad. Yeah, right and we were set, we were sitting there, and this guy who had the tractor, he'd already loaded it up when it no sailed, whatever. Come through the parking lot, and he come over and he pecked on your dad's. Which your dad knew the guy. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a total stranger. And he said, "My wife's going to kick my ass if I bring this thing home." He said, "Are you sure you don't want to buy that?" Your dad said, "Nope, that's what I was going to give for it." And yeah. I, I think he ended up said, "You know, if you'll give me whatever you ran it up to on the auction." He said, "It's on the trailer. I'll just deliver the son of a bitch." Yeah, yeah, so, yeah I'll something like it. that. Yeah, <laughs> so he did. Brought yeah. her down. <laughs> no doubt. Yep. My mom was super impressed when he brought that home. <laughs> Hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. We already had one pulling tractor. He showed up with another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you buy? I bought another pulling tractor. You did what? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to sell it. Trust me. Which he did. <laughs> yep. That was in Nicomas, Illinois. Colder yeah, than Billy Hell that yeah. day. God, it was cold. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and we got there just in time, and, and secretly, I think that was the only reason he went to that son of a bitch, was to bid on that pulling tractor, I think. Who knows? He, he liked like going to auctions, but he didn't like stay long enough to buy yeah, anything. we literally got out of the truck, walked up to the auction. We were not there 10 minutes. Yeah. He stuck his hand up two or three times. Nope, didn't get it bought. Boom. Got in the truck and left. Yeah. Bird, don't fool around. If you want to go to an auction, I'm the guy for that. Back in the day, I haven't been to one for years, but... The, the few that Dad sent me to, I'm like, well, if I've already taken the time to go, yeah, I'm coming home with some shit. Agreed. I'll give the extra five dollars. Yeah, dragging you the know. trailer and all that bullshit. Yeah. yeah, we're coming home with something. Absolutely. Yeah. But I gotta admit though, too, online auctions are the same way because they put that fucking clock on there and it keeps counting no, down. You're like, oh, then you get, then I, you I got get ten seconds. Yeah. You go, now I'm really on the edge here. You yeah. I got ten seconds now, to make or break. I don't it. like to lose. Exactly. I'm, I'm kind of looking to be the Michael Jordan auctions. Yep. Like, I don't want to lose. So now I'm bidding over on it because I just want to make sure that I don't give too sweet a deal to the next guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just like Whistling Diesel said though, when he crushed that 1206, he's like, auctions are easy. You just keep your hand in the air and you'll win every time. That's <laughs> just true. keep your hand up. That's true. He ain't wrong. <laughs> you bet. Yeah, yep. I've been there. What's your favorite part about the real estate business? Like, what's what's the one thing that just every morning I'm going to get out of bed because this is the part that I love? Mm-hmm. Interesting question. I like uh, I like the challenges uh, which we get. You know, for me, a couple different layers. I've got the you know ownership and management challenges. You have I get exposure to a lot of different situations and challenges from from our team, and that's great to help folks work through and develop their business and help them grow and become better at what they do. Uh, and also, uh, you know, I really like creating the market or, or building the deal, you know, which we, I find a little bit more in, in land, commercial real estate, things like that, non-residential stuff. You've got to go out and find it and put it together and, and you know, make the connection, get the networking and, and really create the business rather than just to be reactive. Because your niche, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Matt, but like your niche is a little bit like, hey, I want to start this company in this town i need a property that meets these specs ish sure and then you kind of put that together sure. that, that's kind of your wheelhouse right yeah it's i, I enjoy that yeah yeah because i mean i guess it's not necessarily for sale but if i find what you want and i ask the guy now it's for sale now i'm getting the deal sure yeah because yeah, which i guess i never thought about that but like residential basically Mom and pop come to you. Hey, we're moving to the assisted living, and we want sixty-seven thousand dollars for out. You, know, they've already predetermined this is what we want. You might say, well, it's actually worth sixty-two, or you know, or whatever. Yeah. But everything's pretty cut and dried. Where this guy comes says, I'm looking for a four hundred by six hundred building. Yeah, you know that's going to house this, this, and this. A four million dollar deal, and you're going to try to put this together. Yeah, yeah, that and, and it does. You, you do have to go uh, bird dog stuff on the residential side sometimes as well. I mean, you you do. You have to go out I, and, and find it a that. little bit, but it's just less. You know, it, it's the commercial real estate is professional buyers and sellers, right? They do. Yeah. They're not anchored by emotion. They're anchored by what makes my numbers work. Here's what I want to do in my business, my expansion, what what have you, and the, the they generally have the financing. Yeah, so it's, that's not a hold up. <laughs> but to you know to use Nick for an example to take him from where he has planted his flag on this shining hill 
this Taj Mahal, if you will, of, of McCormickville, this, this fantastic property tax albatross that he has yeah. dumb lucked himself love, into. Love it there. Uh, you know, what number could I possibly put on that property to, to drag you and Kel out of that place? Oh, there's a number. <laughs> you could get me out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I, I say all that to say uh, residential real estate has a lot more emotion. It's your life. It's your family. You're, right. you're yeah. living there, you know. And so you have memories there. You have you have thoughts and so forth. And, well, and, and that's harder a, to do. Even if it's a house that you're buying, well, we didn't really like the house, but we like the location. It's got yeah. a neat Like pasture. the neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. Something dumb. That, so you end yeah. up giving 100 grand more because of somebody like you dick bags them into it. Yeah. And just completely fucks them on the deal. Yeah. But I get it. I know what you're saying. Where the, where the commercial guy, he's like, nope, fuck you. I'm paying this, and that's it. No more. Yeah. Not a penny more. Yeah. Sometimes I fuck the commercial guys. Too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> you just can't tell them that. Yeah, it goes around. It comes around. Oh, they got to gotta have their piece of the pie, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh. No, it's, you know, the commercial stuff, that, that to me is just what trips my trigger. To me, it's just more fun. It's just, uh, you know, more complexity. So, do, more so the onion. on the commercial side, do you see both sides? So, like, when I think commercial, I think of this factory here that basically just kind of shut down. So, we got this great big building here, and who's looking for it? Or do you actually get this factory that's still going, you know, gangbusters, and this guy's like, you know, I'm done. I'm retired. I went out. And you're buying the whole gamut. I mean, the, the machinery. I mean, you're going to run this fucker without a hitch. Nobody even know it changed owners. I mean, do you get into that yeah, kind can, of stuff? Yeah, it can go either way. It can go either way. And you can, you know, to tie that back to, uh, take that back to farming. I mean, take that back to uh, a, a farm that's an operating concern, you know, where somebody wants to sell it, maybe turnkey, and you're, you're at a level where you're absorbing operations that may have, you know, transportation, grain storage. I mean, the big level stuff, right? You, they, they, the seller may be advantaged to sell that as a turnkey operation. Just hard to parcel out. They're not going to get near the return on that if they chop it up into pieces. And, and to have, uh, you know, especially if that seller maybe has concerns operationally that they want to make sure their people stay employed. They want to make sure that, that that farm legacy moves on and then the name stays active, you know, whatever is important to them. Uh, so you, maybe you get somebody who comes in and says, yeah, I'm going to buy it turnkey. I'm going to one money and, and right down to the propane in the tank, and I'm going to buy it. Uh, you see that in commercial real estate as well. Uh, it just depends on the buyers and sellers and what their objectives are, really. Uh, so, you know, we see real estate property sell as the factory building. We see the going concern sell as, you know, the operating factory both ways. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I could see that. So when it comes back to the farming side, do you think here locally where we live, there is a magic number of acres that sells better? So, like, with, when land gets so high, let's just say I had 240 acres. on Fuck it, I'm selling it all in one chunk. Well, not just anybody in our area can buy that. There's yeah. people that could, but not very many. Yeah. So, is it more of that nice square 40s, the sweet spot? Because even if it brought 10,000, you know, most guys 60 years old that have been farming a long time could swing that. Or is it bigger or smaller? It don't matter. It just whatever. You know, I'm not. I'm not sure. I have the crystal ball there either. I, I, I'm not sure that it matters honestly, um, because there's going to be so much appetite, you know, right. for acreage. There, there just really is. I would say, if you get into the, if you're going to take that that 240 and put it into 80s, right? If if it lays that way, or you can you can parcel it that way, or maybe it is just parceled that way. If you can sell it like that, you're you're going to get quite a good selection of people that find affordability to buy an 80. But it's also enough that they're willing to travel a little bit to do it. Sure. You know, if, if you're if 15 acres, how far am I driving for that? Yeah. You know, maybe it, just, maybe it just simply doesn't make as much sense, you know, to go across the county. Uh, but if I can plant my flag and, and, and buy 80 and then, you know, buy eventually buy the 80 next to it or something. Now, you know, you've got the foundations of a, of a farm 8, 10, 12 miles away, and it's, it's doable. Um, so I, I think, you know. If it's a big chunk, you've got investors from out of town. If it's 240 all in one chunk. Then you've got investors from out of town. They're like, well, it's 240. If they're not driving there for an 80, but they'll drive there for 240. Well, you know, you obviously, look at look at our plat maps. How many how many 200 acre flat square none. pieces do we none. have in in you know very very Prairie, few. Richland, Clarksburg, Holland Townships? Yeah. Zero, almost none. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, you get you get north. You go north 15 miles, yeah. and and you're you know you're 240 or 320 acres, a whole different ball game. Yeah, uh, agree. And and you may have those farms there, and you may have. Uh, you may well have those 
sub institutional investors, right? Because it may still not be big enough for the for the pension fund to go and, and invest in. It it might, but it's probably still just not enough dollars there. You know, they're they're maybe looking at the ten million dollar price tagging up to yeah. say, I'm, you know, we need to balance a portfolio, and it's just dollars and cents to them. But you're really looking at your large farm operators and your your farm operators that that have some sort of uh, you know, maybe external business concern that are doing other things. And, you know, we've, we've talked about that a little bit, you know, the folks that have uh, external capital and access to that capital, they're coming in and, you know, they do want that. They, they do want to say, we well, all, you know, I might move 40 miles. It's no big deal, yeah. but I want, you know, 600 acres at a time to do it or whatever. Yeah. And, and I want absolute class A stuff. You know, I want the high PIs. I want the great drainage. I want, you know, stuff that's already tiled. It's turnkey. Yeah. So you as a realtor, and maybe this crosses into, to laws and stuff that you're not allowed to do can you ever get into the side of of brokering the rent side of that so pension fund goes north of town here they buy 600 acres and so then you can step in and be like well i know a guy that would probably be interested in renting that for top dollar or is that a no-no like you can't no there's a couple ways to 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 skin that cat if you will there's uh you can get into there's actually an auction mechanism for auctioning cash rents sure you know that's that's not super popular here, but I mean, it, it happens. Yeah, let's, let's keep it that way. <clears throat> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but it is a mechanism, you know, it, it's a way yeah. to, to accomplish that. Um, and, and the other thing is, is the, the farm management side. And that's what we, we tend to see more. If you're going to do that, yeah. you know, whether that's your, your bank trust or your, your ag management operating company, you know, that, that's putting the acres under management, probably the more common way to see that, see that go. And, uh, and in there, and they're you know very competent professionals that manage acreage for a living, uh, yes. and, and they may also do some brokerage and some appraisal and some other stuff. You know, they're going to add on those services, but you know they're very good at, at making sure that you're you're, you're a you know an absentee owner, right? And maybe third generation absentee owner that just gets the check and mailbox, but yeah. Yeah, you know stuff's taken care of. Sure. Around here, like if if a pension fund was to buy some land, and and maybe you don't know the answer to this, or when they buy a piece of land. Are they looking at a 30-year investment or it's like, we're going to own it because the numbers look right now, but if this fucker tanks, we'll sell it tomorrow. I mean, I don't own it. I don't have an answer for that. I think it really is, is going to be most of the time from what I'm going to see is this, it's portfolio specific. So they're, you know, they're trying to balance, um, uh, you know, their, their asset portfolio uh, in a way that they, you know, real estate is something they need. They need, you know, whether that's, buying the dollar general store that's, you know, that's going to be leased or buying the farmland or whatever, uh, even amongst the real estate asset class, you know, to be, if you have a, a massively big fund, you know, they may have diversity in, in warehousing space to tillable land to, you know, whatever else. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't know the answer to what they would want to do with that. I, I would think that for the most part, they're probably in a position where if they need to liquidate it, they can, mm-hmm. uh, and, and be okay. But you know, they're, I didn't know how jumpy they got. So, like, say they give twelve thousand for this, market pulls back a little bit to eight or nine. Are, you, are they starting to sweat it, or it's like, nah, we, we're gonna ride this fucker out for twenty years? I mean, I didn't know how how jumpy they get when it comes to that kind of stuff. Well, and I, I, I think you know appreciation is probably a, a factor there, right? As it would be for anybody with a real estate asset, but they're probably more practically looking at what's my net operating income. Mm-hmm. You know, what's how much dollars does this investment print? Right, I put X dollars in, I get Y dollars out. Does yep. that math work? You know, uh, and I think that's that's really what they're looking at. You know, it, economies of scale on their side, right? That's the important part. Is that they're 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 going to engage um, competent management to do that, so that they're going to have uh, hopefully a, a good a level of control and understanding of of managing input costs and and you know, future forecasting that stuff sure. uh, so that they, you know, can stay on top of those things and not be blindsided by the, you know, the oh crap moments um, due to market volatility, but still doesn't mean that they're going to you know, always be ahead of the curve. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can take your Lehman brothers, your whoever, you know, look yeah. at the, pa- I mean, yeah. You, yeah, you know, very, very large companies that went down. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I got to ask with you being in real estate, do you get to see both sides of the coin of, Farmer Joe here that's 75 that seen land on RFD TV that sold for 29,000 an acre in Iowa. So he comes to you and he's like, I want to sell my farm and I want 29,000 an acre for it. And then on the other hand, you've got little old lady over here whose husband died. And she's like, well, I'm going to move to town and, you know, I'd, I'd like to get 5,000 an acre. What you clearly know that this guy was worth 
way less and hers worth way more. Do you, do you see, do you have people come to you that's like, well, you know, your land is worth more than that or it's worth less than that. Or do you just got to kind of say, well, if that's what you're wanting, that's what we'll advertise it at. I mean, yeah, well, um, but both of those things, it's, it's tempered, you know, it really is. It's tempered. If you can, if you can get an understanding of, you know, what a person wants out of, out of their asset, you've, you've accomplished a lot of trust there. You've got an understanding of where their mind is, and then you at least have a baseline on, you know, how, 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 do, how do we pull you if we have to pull you back, pull you down from that number, or explain to you that, you know, that, that number should be higher. Uh, I can relate, you know, just anecdotally here, I can relate to two things that I'm working on right now. Um, on a, a, it's not ag land, but on a, a piece of unimproved land, uh, these folks bought it, and they asked me to value it, and uh, they bought it for somewhere in the neighborhood of four times what I think it's worth in today's market. You know, and, and that's, you know, that's a factor. That's, that's sure. definitely, you're a little bit far off there. And so I'm trying to determine, is there, is there something here that I'm not seeing? You know, was there an improvement on that property when they purchased it that's been removed or, you know, some, some thing because you're, you're way worlds apart. And, and really, I don't think, you know, you should be worlds apart. Um, on the flip side of that, uh, I was engaged to give some advice on, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on, on a residential piece uh, to carve off of uh, a, a larger land parcel, and they're trying to think about what should we do with this? Should we, should we, uh, you know, cut this off? How much should we cut off? Should we just tear it down? You know, would we be yeah. better off if we bulldozed it and then put it into production? And uh, and I came back to them, and, and and you know, knowing that mindset of, you know, their their alternative is to put put capital into this in, to you know theoretically improve it, but. Really, it's, I mean, it's going to cost them a bunch of money to tear something down yeah. that isn't going to gain them anything. It's going to cost them in the long run, right? So, you know, giving that approach and kind of starting that conversation was, you know, don't demolish this. You know, it's, it, it may not have a ton of value, but as a package, as a rule piece of ground, you know, it's attractive to people. Now, in that case, you know, just to be specific, we're dealing with, a, dealing with an old barn with, a, you know, a, a center alley and, and corn cribs built in and whatnot and you just can't do a lot with that structure yeah. you know it's hard to say you can put modern machinery in there because you're, right. you're pretty much stuck with you know the 10 yeah. foot wide stuff or whatever um it, you know the best thing you do is maybe pour a concrete floor and make a shop out of it insulate it you know just small stuff in there whatever but uh you know pretty limited uh, but still the alternative cost of paying somebody with an excavator to come in demo it truck it out you know wrap up a lot yeah. of money in something sure. just to not have it anymore uh, so we definitely do see both sides of that, uh, folks that are, for, for one reason or another, to one end of the spectrum or the other, <clears throat> kind of disconnected from the marketplace. And, um, you know, it's an exercise in developing trust very quickly uh, to, to say, you know, this is, this is what the, the science side of things, right? Here's the data, and here's how to interpret the data, and here's, you know, here's how it applies to your situation. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this day and age, you just you just never know because you get some people that are just dead set that they seen this piece three hundred miles away sell for this, and my God, that's what my ground's worth, you know. And well, that's not necessarily the case here. Yeah. Quite honestly, you know, in my business, I'm seeing a lot of that in residential stuff. You know, really? We're seeing sellers being stuck in 2020 when <clears throat> money was cheap and buyers were in a frenzy and people were just climbing all over each other to to have the opportunity to buy something, um, and we're not there anymore, you yeah. know. I think you mentioned, you know, Uncle Joe's American and what, what interest rates are, you know, how that's impacting people. Uh, so it's a big change. It affects yeah. it. That, sure. that puts a, a big dent. You know, when interest has essentially more than doubled. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that that's a big part of it when you start talking four or $500,000 piece of property. I mean, that adds up in a big hurry. Well, and that's, you know, that's just looking at a, that's just looking at a, uh, you know, a, a fixed simple interest situation. Yes. You know, not, not taking into account the adjustable rate stuff. Uh, you know, for, for operators that may have, you know, really, really be facing some serious credit crunch sure. right now. And, and, you know, with the other uncertainties um, on the ag side, you know, cost to do business goes up. What you make at the end of the year goes down. And in the middle, the bank says, give me more, you know, because yeah. that's the deal. And, you know, wh how do you manage that? Um, yep. Do you ever <clears throat> see or get reports, you know, from, and I'm talking, it would have to be bigger cities away from here because, you know, we don't have giant cities here but yeah you know, it's always the big thing after covid when everybody realized that hey i can pay these dipshits to just set at home and work on the computer i don't need this great big giant office building did you see a lot of that 
flip hands and it went from commercial to residential. Like, you know, we got this skyscraper with 4,000 square feet on this floor, but nobody wants it, so we're just going to put apartments in it and make it residential. Do you see reports or different stuff from other cities like that? Or? Yeah, that's that's it's, that's pretty interesting. That that really is the core of, of what's being decimated in commercial real estate right now. We're starting to see that that urban density, that concentration of uh, particularly office buildings because there, there, there's no, you know, return to work, if you will, right? Work is, work is here sure. in the basement. Work is in the home office. Work is at the, you know, the, the shared workspace place. But it's not at your cubicle on in, in the 37th floor of mm-hmm. the, the Watch McCallit building. So I would assume, based on those references, and we're, let's just use Chicago, for example, big city. Sure. So that had to decimate the, the housing market there, didn't it? Because now you have an influx of living space available right because before we had x amount of houses but now we're turning skyscrapers into houses or not or am i wrong there well and some of the concern is is a a lot of those office uh, you know they're it's it's the conversation right now about what to do with it because it's 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 set up to be an office right so you know how do you capitalize that uh as something other than an office and you know seeing the conversion to uh you know, mid density and lower density residential. If you make you know townhomes, apartments, you know penthouses, whatever, out of this stuff uh, to to try to get the the monetization back because it was a that was an, a floor of office buildings, right? Was generating X dollars a year for the landlord, and without that income, what do you do to replicate that? You know, so if if your skyscraper was had a net operating income of you know of, of uh, fifty million dollars at the end of the year, you convert it to an apartment and you sell it, you've you've lost that. Right. right, you know, you've created a condo, and, and you know, so understanding how to monetize that and how to do something with it, I think, is really the big challenge there because the value of the underlying asset, commercial real estate, you know, it's all it's it's production, like farm ground, right? You know, what's the income going to be? I'm buying a thing that's going to produce money. I'm buying a business investment. So with that, with the 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 floor, the building, the office space, when it's no longer productive investment, you know, the value of the asset uh, from a cash flow basis is is decimated mm-hmm. it really is so do you think that's what helped drive farmland prices it's like i owned and let's just i don't know how skyscrapers work but let's just say i owned a quarter of this skyscraper and it's like well fuck it i'll take my 25 million my quarter of that and i'll go buy farmland at least it's still appreciating where this motherfucker's yeah. going down I, yeah. you know well i think so and i, and I think uh, this is just my personal speculation i think we're starting to see in in the land industry ag or not in in, in the concept of land and land ownership we're starting to see a lot of existential pressure on what's the utility of land. You know, uh, here the utility of land is let's 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 do some growing corn on it, right? Let's let's row crop it, or maybe have some you know livestock on on a little hillier ground or whatever. Uh, but now you have the pressure of well, you know, maybe that ground's cheap enough compared to an acre, you know, acre of ground in Strasburg at sixteen five an acre compared to an acre of ground on the north end of Effingham at $237,000 an acre, compared to an acre of ground in Chicago at whatever the hell that price is, you know, where am I going to put my solar panels, for example, right? So there's the existential pressure of, yeah. you know, something that's a complete curveball, and let's let's come in and, and we look at ground prices and we think, you know, holy, holy shit, how am I going to pay for this, right? How's the production ever going to compensate uh, paying this, this price tag? And that hedge fund that has a trillion dollars laying around or whatever, you know, burn a hole in their pocket. They look at it and they say, you know, let's go buy 10,000 acres in Shelby County and put the solar panels on it because the ground's cheap. And right. It's, it's close enough to where we want to ship the power and whatever. And, and, and solar panels, I'm not trying to go down that rabbit hole of just solar, but what's the next thing? You right. know, we have solar and wind today. What's the next thing? You know, we, we've, we've yeah. all faced pipeline intrusion right? yeah. and, and power uh, poles, <clears throat> power pole. poles. Yeah. you know, so what's the next thing? Um, and, that, and that's that's and maybe the next thing is drinking water. You yeah. know, there's there's the crazy stuff happening. So and I, we I got don't know what the, the next thing the, is. The uh, carbon credits, mm. you know, that's a big thing now. That's yeah. coming on board. You know, the, sure. And yeah, and I don't know how all that works. You know that. Yeah. Are you carbon friendly, Nick? Absolutely. Yeah, you're looking a little green. I am carbon <laughs> friendly as you can get. <laughs> I'm I'm the most carbon friendly person you can find. Yep. My corn takes a lot of carbon out of the air. <laughs> Looks like carbon, it. I am carbon friendly. Take your word for it. <laughs> Do the math. I'm killing it. I am killing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and real estate. Well, then you know it's a humongous part of the economy. I mean, it's it's one of the main drivers 
you know, you got to have somewhere to live. Yeah, whether, yeah and, for sure. And it don't matter if you own it or rent it. You know, if if I'm the owner renting it to you and I had to pay more for it, then guess what? The rent goes up. You know, it affects everybody. Yeah. And, hey, one, of, one of my favorite things, and I'm not picking on anybody that rents, you know, but the idea of, of renters coming and saying, well, you know, I'm going to rent rent a house because I don't have to pay property taxes. Yeah. I'm going to rent a house because I don't have any maintenance. Um, you know, missing kind of the forest for the trees because it's all built in, right? Because not yeah. only are you paying for all those things in the aggregate, you're paying a profit on top of it because yeah. the guy didn't go buy a million dollar apartment complex to go broke. Right. You know, exactly. So you know, you're not, you're not cutting the check to the County for the property tax, yeah. but it's getting paid. The, the yeah. part that worries me is someday. And, and now granted, this has never happened yet, but you know, my property taxes here are atrocious. A house that was built in 1988, 36 acres, two junk out buildings and now I build a shop, you know, but my tax and the, the new shop ain't even on the tax bill yet. But my taxes are $4,500 a year. So every 10 years, if my house is not in, increasing by $45,000, I'm going backwards. Yep. So far that's worked. And will it continue to work or will it not? So, you know, I, I don't know. Hmm. Should run for the school board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's where it all goes. My kids don't even go there. Well, I got one kid going there, but yeah, yeah, prior to that, none of them did. And then when they're all graduated, none of them will again. That and the JUCO, that's where it goes. Don't even get me started. Yep. That's the killer in Illinois is the property taxes. You bet. And it kills me because we could be a powerhouse yeah. of an economy with our location, with the industry, with with Chicago, as bad as I hate to say it, but I mean, you know, we we could truly have a lot of things going yes. for us if they wouldn't have ruined it. But they have yeah. just flat fucking ruined it. Yeah. At some point, you know, not to not to go on the, the patriotic tangent here, but at some point, I, I just have to look just just me individual personal American citizen statement. At some point, I, I look at this and I say, at, at what juncture does the average human, the average American, wake up and say, "I'm buying more than I want," right? Yeah. I'm I'm. And not just I'm overtaxed, but but get granular and say, you know what, to hell with that. I don't need that service. And maybe the government's not the best one to provide it, et cetera. You know, and, and why don't you just let me keep that money? Yeah. And yeah. I'll figure out something good to do with it. Or I'll, I'll take care of what I need to yeah. take care of. You know? Good luck with it. But that's, you're exactly right. But holy cow. I can't name one thing oh, that the government does better than the private sector other than tax and fuck things up. Yeah. That's the only thing they do better. And neither yeah. one of them are positive to you or I. So, <laughs> no. yeah. Buy some license in Illinois for anything. Yeah. Holy cow. It's it's salty. Yep. Absolutely. And it's like we was talking earlier out in the shed. And and I truly do see it both ways. And and this this may sound shitty or or whatever, but all I'm saying is I see it both ways. So, originally, that's why our ancestors left Europe. Yes. Because shit got so high. They're like, fuck, the average man can't afford nothing because yeah. these families just kept snowballing yes. and snowballing and snow. It would be no different than farming around here. If if my neighbor kid, if his mom and dad own 10,000 acres and me and my wife own 40 acres and we pass it on the next generation tax-free, who do you think is going to have more buying power, my kids or theirs? Clearly not mine. So I do see where the inheritance tax and all that come from to try to bust this shit up to where people can't just amass giant fortunes. I also believe, and once I buy it, this is mine. Yeah. I don't know that you're necessarily entitled to do it through taxes. Yeah. So I don't know what the correct answer is there because, once again, we're the guys stuck in the middle now because the people around here that do own 10,000 acres can afford four lawyers to fight the tax loopholes anyway. Yeah. And your mom and dad died and own 160 acres, and you're paying out the ass on taxes just to keep it. So I don't know how we ever navigate that channel and try to get it back. But we're literally, we have literally reached the point, I honestly feel like, that the snowballs are getting so big that there's no stopping these people now. You know, th this is a whole different animal from the 1950s. You know, okay, this guy, sure, he was a wealthy man back then. He owned 300 acres. His net worth was 150000 Yeah. You know, you got people now that are worth $150 million, and yeah. there's no stopping it. I mean, they could literally go out and buy five, six, seven hundred acres a year and not even miss the money and just and just roll it and roll it and roll it and roll it and so i don't know what the answer is there i'm not saying tax the piss out of everybody because the government ain't going to spend it more efficiently than we are but i don't know how you well yeah i mean i, I hey i like having i like having paved roads and fire departments and sure. running water right you know i'm not trying to be you know completely 
the, the yeah. tax for for general social good isn't the answer ever. Uh, but but I also look at it and I you know as a business operator, I'm, it's compressive. Yeah. It's just compressive, and I look at you know I, I find myself where do I go from here? You know what's next, and 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 what's the right move? Um, you know, what right. risk do I want to assume, right. knowing that I open another office and it comes with another property tax bill, and you know. Right. It's like around here all that stuff. when you build a new house and your property taxes immediately go up, it stifles development, right? Yeah. Sure. If they say, okay, if you, if you build a new house and pump all that money into our economy through the lumber yards, the concrete guys, the, con, the construction workers, all that, you won't have to pay property taxes for 15 years. People be all over that, but it's it's the exact opposite. Yeah. It's like the minute the last nail is drilled, fucking just boom, they just stick it right up your ass. Yeah. And it stifles development. Well, that's, you know, how, how short are we in housing right now? Right. You know, I mean, in, in the, the quantity of millions of units, right, nationally. And it's, yep. it's a huge problem. Yep. Uh, and, and it's just, you know, it's not getting particularly better. Uh, we've really got to change that conversation, I think. Yeah, for sure. Nick looks like he's got the answers. What do you think, Nick? Uh, well, I think all those people that shouldn't move to the country, they should live in apartments in a city. And that would solve a lot of this. Because next thing you know, they're upset about the smell. They're upset about the traffic in the country. Been they're they're right. behind a tractor. Rural blah, water. Blah, blah. Yeah. Rural water yeah. ruined this country. Keep your ass in the city. Before, when you had to buy a piece of land, build a stick, build a house on it, drill a well, you had all this upfront cost. Yeah. A lot of these yuppies are like, eh, I don't know if I'm really going to do that. But yeah. now it's like, yep, yeah, fuck it. I'll buy a double wide. I'll have Morton put me in a little <laughs> 20 by 40 yeah. shed. I got rural water. I can have it all, internet. Boom, fuck yeah, sign me up for the country. But then as soon as you pull it, you're like, well, God damn, I just hung laundry on the line, and you're blowing dirt all over it because you're working the ground next to my house. And yeah. I don't like absolutely. the smell of your cows and everything absolutely. else. Fuck you. I was here first. Yeah. Just the way I feel. I, I look at it as I own this piece of land. I pay the taxes. If I want to turn it into a fucking nuclear waste dump, I should have the right to do that. I agree with that completely. Completely. But a lot of people don't see it that way. No, no, they don't. Unfortunately. It's a mixed up world. It is. It's a sad state of affairs. Yes. Absolutely it is. I don't know how we fix it. Don't know if we can fix it. Well, we sit here and we bitch about it. That's how we solve it, Tony. Well, that, yeah. This what is I've learned from college kids is if you just protest enough, things will change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about the college protest, Matt? Yeah. Fill us Where are you at on Hamas? Yeah. But you know what? I'm, I'm, i got to admit, I'm not especially educated. I know probably enough to be dangerous in the conversation. What I understand, there's some pro-Palestinian uh, protests going on, right? And, and yep. yeah. I guess on some of these campuses, you know, these, these um, professional education participants got a little unruly and uh Damn, they kind of had got to be their ass handed to them by some fine folks at university of north carolina thank you yeah for that fraternity for putting the american flag back up here's what i know here here's what i think i know anyway most of those people that are participating in these protests if they want really want to make a difference pack your shit grab a passport fly to israel Pick up arms. Most of the shit they believe in, Hamas will shoot you dead on the spot. You'll be done. They're not gonna they they do not agree with your values, if you can even call them values. Hamas they're, is bad enough that like Saudi Arabia they're, they're, they're like, so mm. bad. Other Muslim countries don't want them. Like, yeah, these guys kinda suck ass. Like yeah. we're not really willing to take them in. We're kinda hoping the Israelites like take them out. Mm. They're not that good. Yeah. Kinda kinda B rate. Kind of from what I've noticed. Well, I, I did hear, I want to go back to you. You're talking about the American flag, and uh, I want to explore that a little bit because that, that's, I mean, maybe I'm a little bit more educated on that, but I, I found that very interesting. I think my wife was talking about that a little bit. She was kind of filling me in on some of this stuff, but I, I was really, really intrigued by a group of people on American soil that would take an American flag and take it down. Yeah. And not, not, I mean, conceptually even have a, a yeah. fucking inkling yeah. of, of the implications. Like, you know, to your point, my property, I'm going to do what I want with it. So if I come to your house and take your American flag down, how does that go for me? Yeah, we're going to have a problem. Yeah, not particularly fucking well. Exactly. It's not going to go well at my house. It's not going to go well at Nick's house. And the flip side of that is, is on your property, if you want to fly a Palestinian flag, that's your deal. That's your property. Have that on my tax-funded property. Yeah, Yeah, pack your shit. We're putting you on the next thing smoking. We're shipping your ass out of here. Yeah. You're done. At the over. end of the day, could could you lost your scholarship? You're over. 
could you imagine if social media would have come out, let's say Facebook and TikTok both come out in 1990, how much Jesus. the dynamics would change back when it was the fucking Wild West. You yeah. could say anything, do anything. Nobody got offended. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You see this on right. TikTok, these people taking the American flag down at a university. The volume of people that would be on TikTok just eating these people alive mm. would be atrocious. Yeah. But now you can't because the, the video immediately gets taken down. You know, that we're, we're, we're not going to have that. You know, we, that's hate speech. They can do all they want to do, you know, taking yeah. shit down. But the minute you bitch about them taking down, well, that's hate speech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it would have been the Wild West. And actually, even back to 2020, when I, like, first got on TikTok, it was yeah. the Wild West compared to what it is now, even. Yeah. I mean, they just keep wrenching it tighter and tighter. And I don't give a shit if they ban TikTok tomorrow. Everybody's all up in arms about it. I don't care. I ban it. Who cares? <laughs> Life will go on. I couldn't care less. <laughs> yep. The world's always turning. Exactly. Yeah, it shouldn't get banned. They're just, they're just scared you get informed too many people too quickly yeah. without them being in control yeah. of it. We saw in the last election cycle, whichever side of the aisle you're on, I, I mean, I, I do don't care, matter. but I don't care. Like, it was clearly one-sided, clearly. Like, that that's where they're at. That's their narrative, and they own it, and that's fine. I don't have to participate in it. I don't have to believe it, whatever. But, like, when you force... The opposing side to, to yeah. bow down to you? Well, maybe that's... That, now maybe we have a problem. Yeah. I just get tired of, of how stupid they think we are, that TikTok is a national security threat, but the southern border is wide open. Just bring in whoever you want. Buy so, the truck. So it's the point that they have proved their audacity and they realize that uh, essentially the American people won't stand up for shit. No. For our ancestors being not yeah. much older than our children... When they founded this country, honestly, they were 18 to 21-ish, yeah. 18 to 26, let's call it, and founded the, the greatest nation in the history of the world. And here we are, yeah. enduring all this stupid shit. They were dumping tea in the harbor over yep. a small tax. We're putting up with way more shit than that. Yeah, by far. We're just sitting here bitching about it, like, because we're not that hungry yet. Exactly. And I'm as guilty as anybody. Oh, for sure. I am too. Absolutely. You know, I would be the first, I would happily march if we're going to march, but and still yep. then, you know, I'm just bitching about the <laughs> dipshits protesting on college campuses, just laughing about how clueless they are. And, have, and I, I just want to be left alone. I, I'm sorry. I don't want to pick any, I, I will pick a side if you force me to pick a side, but I, I just want to be left alone. Yeah. I just want to do my shit. I don't want 1%. Or less setting the yeah. narrative for the country. Absolutely, you know what I mean. It's it's the classic squeaky wheel gets the grease bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And, and nobody, or I'm not gonna say nobody, but virtually the vast, vast, vast majority of people do not feel that way. Yeah. But yeah, they're getting by with all of it. Yes. Stop. I think it's yeah. the difficulty of the snowballs. You, know, you talked about the snowball economically, but apply it politically. And Nick, you know how how long in in the effort to chase the land of opportunity. How majestically we fucked up the land of opportunity here, right? Yeah. You know, we've let the snowballs snowball, yeah. and and now you have this this beautiful bureaucracy, yeah. That you you can't it's going great. You can't kill a piece at a time, you know. And I think that's that's the conversation on the national level politically, right? Is you can't you can't make a course correction, or at least a lot of people feel like you can't make a course correction. I don't think you can. You know, do you just you know, you reach the point where you know you take it back down to the foundation and? Say, hey, we're, we're going to do a did, little bit different. Did you ever happen to watch the show Alias? No, I don't know that with, I did. With Jennifer Garner. Long story short, she's a double agent working for this organization and then gets pulled in by the CIA, regardless. And so she wants to take this office down. I'm like, well, it's bigger than that. That's the arm. This is the monster. And they pull out the map, and the, mo- and the, and the monster is big, right? Like, to take it all down, it's huge. And I think that's where we're at, like, it's way bigger than what we think it is. It's so off the chain, unhinged. Like, we, we, we just want our freedom, right? Like, I don't really care about what's going on in New York, Pennsylvania, Wyoming, whatever. Like, I care, but I just kind of want to be left alone. Just kind of want to do my deal, live on. But it's way bigger than that. The government has got so big. Like, let's look at the people that are in charge of our country. Okay, if you're going to start a business tomorrow, ABC company, XYZ company, are you hiring Nancy Pelosi? Are you hiring Joe Biden? 
Are you hiring any of these fucking people that are so goddamn old that they don't even know where the nursing home's at? They, they're so unhinged, they couldn't find the son of a bitch in, in 24 hours, even though they should have been in there 12 years ago. No, you're not hiring any of them for any of that. And that's the people that are running this country. Yeah. Because we are, we have, the people that founded this country were young. They got out, handed off to the next generation. And I, I don't even mean to go down the boomer kick, this, that, and the other, but it kind of plays into it. Now that generation is, has managed this deal for decades upon decades now. None of those asshats you would hire to run a lemonade stand at the park. I, would, I can't fathom what I would hire Nancy Pelosi to run. I don't know what it would be. It would literally have to be the stupidest business plan in the world to have her run anything. But she's pretty high up on the totem pole. Joe Biden at this point is just sad. Like, the, like regardless if you're left or right on politics, the fact that he's in charge of the nuclear football and the greatest country in the history of the world, that he's in charge of it, is sad. Now, I don't care which side of the aisle you're on. I mean, I do care. But regardless of which side of the aisle, the fact that he's in charge of it, you wouldn't hire that guy to, to coach a JV football team. You wouldn't hire him in charge of holding the equipment to a JV football game. And that goes for Mitch McConnell, any of them. Yeah, Mitch McConnell, yeah. all those pick, guys. Pick your like, poison. Yeah, pick, pick, pick your aisle, pick your oldest shit guy. You wouldn't hire him to do shit because they're, they're well past their prime if they even had a prime. Joe a Biden has been a bona fide idiot since the day he started in Congress. Go back to his earlier clips. That guy's the dumbest son of a bitch we've ever put in a charge of anything. I yeah. wouldn't put that son of a bitch in charge of cleaning out a gutter or coaching a little league team. I for damn sure wouldn't put him in charge of a softball team. He'd be sniffing the shit out of him. Just, but you wouldn't put him in charge of anything. Like you, That guy is that dumb. He was that yeah. dumb 48 years ago. Yeah, they're just leeches. Now he's just an old guy that's super dumb. Well, I was going to say, I think you know his potential is maybe with a shampoo company. A something. smell tester or something like that. Actually, that would be where his niche lies. Uh, yes. But I'm like, you take all those guys. Like, you can't, you can't be, and, and I'm not being mean at some point, but like, once you're past, as far as I'm concerned, once you're past 65, if that's the retirement age, you can't run for office anymore. Agreed. Your ass lives underneath the laws that you passed. I'm not a pilot. Do you, do you guys know, is there is there an FAA mandatory retirement age for yes, commercial pilots? There, there is. There is. Six, Absolutely six, six, there is. You know, because I'm 65. I might kill 300 people on this airplane. But you can so kill because, the entire world. But because I'm 95, I can fuck up life for these 300 million people. Yeah, it's yeah. no big deal. Because they're never going to live underneath mm -hmm. those laws. Yeah. You wouldn't put those guys in charge of shit. And some of it's just age, right? Like, most of those guys are, are career politicians. They're just shitty. They have been shitty for years. They've, they've never done they nothing their entire years life. Ago. They've nothing. done nothing. You, they've never had a real job. They've never done anything. They've never produced anything. They've never built anything. Because they're shitbag people. And that's fine. Whatever. But once you're that old, even if you are a good person, you're just that freaking old. You can't do shit. Like, and that's just the way the world works. It gets old. Like, if I'm going hunting tomorrow with a dog, are you taking one that's 75 fucking years old, or are you taking one that's four? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to walk three miles. The 75-year-old dog ain't making it, right? Like, you yep. just ain't going to make it. And, and I don't even mean to be mean, but you think differently. Like, my dad and, and I get along totally, perfectly fine. But he thinks different than I do. Sure, and yes. and and you and it's just a, the generation gap, you know. So like, my dad, you know, he grew up in a huge family. They were poor as a lot. Like even to this day, twenty bucks is a lot of money to my dad. Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of money to him. Twenty bucks is like I don't even miss it yeah. because I, I grew up in a different time. It's like twenty bucks don't get you nothing. Yeah, you know, <laughs> barely get you McDonald's. This yeah, one. exactly. And I, I don't mean that meanly towards him. I I, tr I truly don't. But but you think differently. You yes. know, he's, he's always had the mindset that $20, and it was a hell of a lot of money when he was a kid. Well, God, as but, much money as these old politicians are pissing away, Tony, think what? <laughs> I mean, they're pissing away trillions. Yeah, and don't even bat an eye. Think what it would be if they had our mindset on where 20 bucks isn't yeah. that much of a, of a dollar amount. Yeah. I mean, it'd be tens of trillions. Exactly. No big deal. Well, and how, you know, I'm going to go down the politics rabbit hole here, or maybe the government rabbit hole. How much does that happen locally? We talk it about happens, the it happens at every the level. The fucking big spooky monster that is national it government, at every right? Level. That, you know, every level. It amazes me uh, to to pay attention to to how much stuff is just 
absolutely sideways at the yeah, local yeah. level with, you know it is and, and not just that but how many local levels we have you know your local fucking mosquito abatement district yeah yep. your library council your you yes. know watch my call it this and that you know lug nut collectors of america fucking whatever it is yep. you know all these layers of stuff that it just we just take a little little bit little fraction little little mm-hmm. nugget on that tax bill right yeah to support this or that um i pay taxes to a library yeah. district that's 45 miles from here <laughs> i didn't even know they had a library I can't fathom that it's that great. You should read more. Can't. If I try to read online, it just scrolls to some damn ad, and I got to click the next page, and that's when I'm done. <laughs> it, it, it's absurd to me. <laughs> Absolutely absurd. Yeah, they they've they fucked her up good this time, and it well, just it's appalling that it's got gotten this far out of hand. I mean, regardless whether you're on the left or the right, you're seriously going to hire a guy who cannot walk from the podium. To the exit of the room, cannot walk up a set of stairs. You wouldn't hire that guy to do anything in your business. Yep. The, they figured out a hundred years ago, divide and conquer. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and you can take your pick whether you want to say it's Trump versus Biden, you know, Obama versus. But take your as long as they know that we get these two guys on the main stage, and we know that half the people are going to fight over each one of these. Tomorrow, let's just say that Nick and I both said, "Fuck it, we're running for president," and I'm on one side, and Nick's on the other. Yeah. And people are going to be like, well, fuck, I kind of like what they both say. Yeah. We can't have that yeah. because now we don't have division. As long yeah. as we're fighting each other, we're not fighting them. Exactly. Yeah. That's what they don't want. Absolutely. And until people get it through their head that is us, the blue-collar working man, against every one of those son of a bitches, all of them, both sides of the aisle, it'll never change. I see it every day on TikTok. Somebody will start out with a comment that... Fuck Joe Biden, and then it's, oh, well, fuck Donald Trump, you know, and just right on yeah. down the list, and it's divide and conquer. And yep. do you dipshits realize, fuck all them people. I, I'll even go as far as say, yeah. fuck Donald Trump, all of them. Fuck all yeah. of them. I'm done with every fucking bit of it. Fuck them all. Yeah. Start over. It's it's never going to change, ever. No. Yeah. And I'm going to go out and make a bold-faced prediction. I was a Trump supporter. I've, I thought the guy was done fine. But he will not get elected because there's too many wishy-washy Republicans that are going to, oh, you know, I, too many mean tweets. And and so we'll be back at fucking square one again. What well, can you fathom, though? Let's back up here four years, whatever, five years. Can you fathom if Donald Trump said the stupid shit that Joe Biden yeah, said? exactly. Like, that guy literally couldn't read anything off the teleprompter and get it correctly. Like, he's going to mess it up regardless. You leave him on his own, he's going to say some really stupid shit. But even off the teleprompter, he messes it up bad. How bad the Saturday Night Lives, yep. the news agencies, this it would have just obliterated Trump on, on on presenting it as such. Don't you find it oddly coincidental that we didn't have presidential debates? Yeah. I don't care if COVID, we can do debates online. You can sit in your living room, I can yeah. sit in mine via Zoom. We yeah. can have all the debates you want to have. Yeah. Can't pull it off with this equipment. No, just can't and do it. Sure don't look, I mean... Do you guys, and I never thought about this until so I seen this on TikTok, and I just seen it yesterday. So we are, what is it, May? So, I mean, we're seven months from an election, thereabouts. What Ish, is yeah. Do you guys not find it really odd that there ain't yard signs plastered everywhere, billboards? That's already much. been decided. That's what I mean. Not much going on in the political arena. It's pretty quiet. For being seven months out, we just went through a primary election. In March, right? Yeah. And the fucking signs have been plastered since a year ago. And that was a local primary. Yeah. We're talking president of the United States. Yeah. Seven months away. The the only signs you see are the ones that have been sitting in this guy's yard since yeah. the last yeah. election. There's you no need to worry about it if you're just going to print it when you're done, Tony. Yeah. So... Are we, are we expecting a big change on the ticket? I mean, we're going we're gonna to have a rematch, right? We're going to be... It's going to be Biden rematch. and Trump. Yeah. I, I mean, so. which for, for me, at... at 38 years old, which, granted to the kids, they're just now voting. I'm, I'm a fucking dinosaur, right? But, I mean, sure. at 38 years old, I'm, I'm not overly thrilled about the choice between 80-year-old number one and 80-year-old number two. You know? I, I guess the way I look at it, if, and this is the way I feel, that once you reach a, cer- reach a certain age, you're done. Yeah. yeah. Trump falls under that category. Sure. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't mean that to be meanly. I, I'm sure people will fucking delete me off of the, this podcast. Or t- I, I'm not saying I don't like Donald Trump, but... We can't have Absolutely. it both ways. Is that not the thing we always bitch about? We got it two Absolutely. different ways, right? Absolutely. So which way are we doing it? Yeah. 
And I don't Absolutely. want to hear this shit as well. It's the lesser of two evils because where the fuck has that got you the last 50, 60 years? That's, it's got you that's the only choice we've had for as long as I've been voting. Yep. Lesser of two evils. Yep. Okay. And I'm done with it. Well, I'm not doing the lesser of two evils. We're either going to fucking fix it or we're not. Take your pick because I'm done with the lesser of two evils fucking bullshit. I'm done. When George Washington ran, it wasn't the lesser of two evils. Mm. It was freedom or the king. Exactly. You know what? Fuck the king. We'll just shoot his ass and his troops and their fucking... Trumpet blowing war. Yeah, and red, just, red. Yeah. You fuckers are goddamn. Yeah, you guys are cheating. You're yeah, cheating. Well, You're fucking yeah. hiding in the woods and camouflage. You, yeah, you, you got to wear red coats and die like a man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fuck you. Beat Boom. your drums and this. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, you guys literally <laughs> the entire world and lost it all. Yeah, except exactly. for some shitty little island. <laughs> exactly. That we saved your. You ass. guys were the mic. Saved your ass You were the mic stamp from. of the fucking world. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you guys, in the, you would be speaking German had we not saved your shitty little island. So we're done. No offense to the British people. I don't have a huge problem against you, but you guys literally owned the world and fucked it yeah. up, and we kicked your ass. So exactly. You know, you guys learned your lesson. You sided with us in the end. Yeah. But you cost my country a shitload of people defending your shitty little island. Yeah. Because you guys just wouldn't make peace with Adolf. Yep. And Agreed. let him fight the Russians until you killed them all. And then we be fucking with Ukraine right now. Yeah. Because he'd have killed them all off. Yeah. But then whatever. you could have got half the world back, but no, you yeah. had to fight No, but you had to be, you know, fight this official war, whatever. Thanks a lot, Winston. Yeah, and I'm I'm sick of the Ukraine deal too. I'm sick of all no. that. I don't I don't give a fuck. I want to I want to put a fence up all the way around the U.S. Yes. and fuck all you guys. I'm not giving you no money. I'm not doing nothing. Fuck everybody. Yeah, we got too many problems here at home. We get this sorted out. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll think about it. So you come see me. Throw eighty one billion dollars my way. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, <clears throat> maybe yep. sometime yeah. this week would be good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I could I could do a, I could put a dent. <clears throat> yeah, and some of my shit with that. So so tell me if I'm wrong. So to me. The government, in a sense, is a business, right? If if you and I were the only two people in charge, they said the whole government, there's no Congress or no nothing. You and I are running the whole ship. We look at it as a business, right? Are you okay. just going to willingly give just $80 billion here, $20 billion here, a million here? you got to look at it even, Nobody's different, gonna do even that. different from that, Tony. Are you going to borrow yeah. $80 billion from, from Matt to give to China? Yeah. Or yep. not, you're not giving it to China. You're borrowing it from China, yeah. giving it to other countries. Yeah. Why don't we just pick up the phone and say, hey, we ain't got $80 billion. We'll Call China. They'll yeah. give it to you. Maybe. Agreed. Why Why are we paying interest on it? Call them. And that's where I want to tell China, too. Yeah, fuck off. Oh, by the way, all that interest we owe you. Yeah. yeah piss shit. off. Pound sand. Yeah. We're done. Fuck you. We're done with that, too. <laughs> yeah. We're not paying it back. <laughs> Turns off, you are not getting any of it. Yeah. We're done. That's where I'm at. So did you kind of get the feel how these podcasts go now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we start out politely on real estate and end up really pissed. Exactly. Yeah. Can politics. you imagine, like, the greatest day for me is the last Ukrainian and the last Russian are holding pistols at each other, and they pull the trigger simultaneously, and they're both just done, which is what Patton would have done for us had we not killed him off in this bullshit jeeping accident, had we just fueled up the German tanks, give them a hot meal, some warm clothes, said, hey, would you guys follow us to Russia? We'll finish this son of a bitch. We could just kill them off. Then there's no Vietnam War. That saves us, what, 70,000 people-ish. There's no Korean War. There's no communist Russia. There's no Cold War. That saves us, I don't know, roughly $20 trillion in pissing money away on that because communism dies at that point. I think it'd been a win if we'd have just smoked him out then. It's my personal opinion. Could have took him down. Wouldn't have been that hard. They were like four gas tanks away and a hot meal from taking the Russians down anyway. He's not wrong. And FDR sucks. I'm gonna go out on that limb too. He sucks. Sucked at sucked my hairy white ass. But who's, who's, when you read your social studies book, who is the greatest president ever? Oh, FDR, he brought oh, power to rural America. Yeah. Meanwhile, he screwed the world blind, um, and Adolf Hitler was a bad guy. Not saying he was a good dude. But I'm like, we were all against Adolf, because we had German heritage. Meanwhile, we sided with a guy who killed ten times more freaking people of his own people, Joseph Stalin, for those socialists out there, and those communists that think that's great. We sided with a guy who was 10 times worse than Adolf Hitler ever thought about being on his worst day. Yeah. And so, for you young kids, the New Deal was basically this. We were getting fucked in the front, and FDR's like, yeah, we got to rephrase this. Yeah. So, the New, D- New Deal is, we're going to fuck you from behind. Yeah. So, that's what he did. Yeah. 
That guy was fucking worthless. Absolutely worthless. Yes. Well, Woodrow Wilson was probably the most he, worthless. Wor- yeah, Woodrow started it all. He was the most worthless son of a bitch we've ever had in this yeah. country. And then he got it going, and then it just, it's evolved from there. But most of you younger folk don't even know who Woodrow yeah. Wilson is. No. But he was a useless piece of shit. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Yeah. And, you know, staircases, since I'm in a wheelchair. But, hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're awful quiet over here. You're just letting uh, yeah. us like just go yeah. off on this. Yeah, show. Right now, he's like, "Damn, I wish I'd have exited yeah. out of this deal about 20 yeah. minutes ago." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here's where we're at, man. This is how we go. That's how we roll. That's how it always ends. We've up. solved America's problems. We can solve it. It can be. They, they make big problems out of small problems. You see it at the local level where it's township, school board, whatever. They make a huge problem out of a small issue. The United States government is no different. For God's sake, they can't run the post office. The other day, I sent a package, priority, mind you, to Pennsylvania. It got 30 miles from the guy's house. They sent it to Kansas City and then brought it back. Now, I'm not good at the Pony Express. I don't run logistics companies for a living. But I can tell you the closest way to rural Pennsylvania when the package is already in Pittsburgh is not via Kansas City. Had it not even been there yet, it's still not Kansas City because yeah. that's a long ways west yes. of us. Yeah, like literally anywhere but Kansas City for that. But now they're closing all our local post offices here in the upcoming shortly. They're closing all, all our mail is going to go to Chicago. You might as well say the hell with it. Mail just ain't going to happen yep. anymore. Yep, that's where UPS needs to get on board and just be like, yeah, 50 cents, we'll ship a letter for you. Which, who writes letters anymore? You know, but still. If you ship by UPS lately, though, since their last union contract, you ain't shipping shit for them without without it being 30 bucks. Really? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm sure that didn't go to the drivers from what I've seen, but they are higher than giraffe ass. Yes. Really? And I'll, they're still the best option, but holy cow, are they pricey. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. So what do you think? You're just sitting here like a yeah. like a bump on a log. Yeah, You're just like taking just, it. Just I'm, I'm I am I'm taking it in. <laughs> there was quite a bit of evolution here it, in this conversation. Well, in the last there, about there 10 was minutes. evolution and revolution. Yes. <laughs> Which there would you, you like to get in on? Yeah, oh, man. Where do you want to take it, Matt? That's we're, interesting. We're all we're on board. Mm. Nobody on this podcast gives a fuck. Yeah, They're all, <laughs> just say whatever you want. They like it. Yeah, <clears throat> man. But we're not wrong in what we're saying, are we? We got a clean house, and I mean all of them. Yeah. I don't care who I don't, you are. I don't care if you served on a drainage district board for two years or two terms. Your ass is done. I want a whole new slate, all new people. Top to bottom. Over. You you sat on the school board. In fact, you was the youngest person around here to ever be elected to That's a school true. board, right? You were. At 18 years old, right? That's what they tell me. Yep. And it, it's a shit show. You can't get nothing done. It's a great experience. Great experience. And I would do it again, but I would never do it again. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. just, Superintendents run the show. I don't care what anybody says. They set the narrative, or they do now. Maybe they didn't then. But they come to the school board, well, we need to do this, and nobody wants to buck the system. So, yeah, we need to, you know, we need to spend $93,000 on the pitcher's mound. And, yeah. What's the, you know, yeah. the, it's, it's the, the big problems out of small problems, like, like Nick, like we said. And it's, I, I think the biggest thing is nobody takes a step back, in my experience. I should say nobody takes a step back. I experienced a lot of challenges where we're, we're having a conversation about an issue without ever saying, why in the fuck are we talking about this? Agreed. What, yeah. is, what is the purpose of this conversation? It's literally that if Nick and I are planting corn tomorrow and row one plugs up on his planter and there's rain coming in and we got to get this fucker moving and I'm at the front of the tractor being like, Man, this, this fucking left weight needs painted. I mean, we, we can't do nothing to us left weights painted. It's like, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? Nothing. Right. And it, it always has to be some stupid lady who's a good 80 pounds overweight that has to throw out the what ifs. Well, I'm not talking about the what ifs. we got to get from point A to point B. She always wants to throw in the stupid shit. It's like, shut the fuck up. We're not even talking about that. It, it just has nothing that's to do with my, anything. That's my point with meetings. I don't, I don't go point, to them. I'm at not some serving point, on them. Every meeting I've ever been to comes to the point of, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Exactly. You shouldn't be allowed to speak anymore. And I'm not saying all my ideas are great and I should run the world. I clearly shouldn't. But every meeting I've ever been involved in at any level always comes down to some jack wagon with a personal agenda. Agreed. Wants to, wants to veer it off into no man's land yep. over something that... 
Well, Toto wanted to shit on the neighbor's yard, but that's not legal here. Can we change that? Yeah. We're talking about putting new water pipes in. Next yeah. thing you know, you your dog is shit on top of where the water pipe should go. And now we got to yeah. get somebody involved. You made a mountain in out of a mole. Yeah, now we have to have some environmental study of where your dog shit. How about you keep your dog in your own yard and let's move forward? Agreed. Every meeting I've ever been in ends up being in that deal. Yep. Like To the point that you just can't take the stupidity in. They overcomplicate everything. If we said the three of us are going to go town right now, I got a minivan out here. We can easily fit in that. Let's go. Somebody would throw a fucking wrench in it. Yes. Well, he, he's handicapped. That's that's a handicap. You know, I mean, it was just yeah. fucking on and on and on and on. Well, I'm, some I, of it comes back and comes back to back in the day when you did stupid shit, somebody punched you in the face. Agreed. We have to get back to a society where punching somebody in the face to solve the problem is it, just the end of the problem, right? You're right. Now, I'm not saying you we're just ass kicking on every corner. Everybody's John Claude Van Kelly, whatever. But like at some point in time, like you got to get back to the point of yeah. dumb shit gets you beat, yeah. gets your ass beat up. Like bullies have a purpose. Agreed. We've talked about this on other podcasts. At some point in time, stupid shit has repercussions, and you have to get your ass kicked for it. Back when I was a kid, well, not all that long ago, clear, you know, take two years ago. If I fucked up, my dad was kicking my ass. Agreed. You do dumb shit, he's putting your foot in your ass. That's just how it was. Clear back to when I was a little kid. That's the repercussion. That's the thing that kept me from doing this, 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 and this. Knowing I'm getting a foot put in my ass. And we have moved so far in society about from away from the fact that somebody's going to whip your ass. we got to get back to that one way or another. Whether it's the cops whipping your ass, your dad whipping your ass, your uncle whipping your ass. Somebody needs to whip your ass for doing bad shit. Agreed. That's just what we, we got to get back to. You see it every day on the news. If somebody had whipped their ass three years ago, that shit wouldn't have happened. Yep. Tell me I'm wrong. No. No, you're not. Ass kickings solve a lot of problems. All this shit with the Hamas protesting going yeah. on? Prime example, the other day on that flag at UNC, they, they did the right thing. They put the flag back up. They could have solved it way quicker if they just whipped those guys' ass. Exactly. We're going to whip your ass. We're going to put your ass on a plane and ship your ass back to the country. You, you think Hamas is great? We'll ship your ass there. You can pick up arms. Oh, newsflash asshats. When they drop you off in Israel, Hamas is going to shoot your ass because yeah. they don't put up with queers, this, that, and they don't put up with any of that shit. They're going to mow you down the second you get off the plane. Yep. Hey, we're here to defend you. Well, yeah, we don't like you. You're done. Ass kicking solve a lot of problems. It does. Totally does. Not saying there's not rights for people. You, you know, everything can't be solved with an ass kicking, but a lot of shit can. Yeah. We've just become too pussified. Yeah, absolutely. The world is soft. We can't ever eat a personal responsibility. You know, Absolutely. And, and everybody's, <clears throat> everybody likes to talk about the idea that the glamour of personal responsibility, but they don't really want to take it. They no, don't really no, want to own personal not. responsibility. You know, you, you, watch your, you watch your buddy do some stupid shit yeah. and get his ass whipped. You know, you get defensive about it. Hey, Why would you fucking hit my friend? You know, now, yeah. now you want to you be in the middle of this beef. You look at your dumb shit buddy and say, you're a fucking dumb shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, get and, your ass and, hit for a reason. You, you got out what you put in, chief. Yeah. So. Good job. Let's tie a bow around it and move on. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's pretty much where I come to with politicians. Well, yes. this is pretty much what you put into it. So you got an ass kicking coming now. Yeah. <laughs> they, then, Am I wrong? That would go a long way. That would go a long way if we just let some ass kickings happen in Congress because Lord knows very much then it could defend shit. And to, it's, it's got so far to hand now, it's got to go back to judges. I yes. mean, all of them. All of them. So oh, you're, you're you're seeing all kinds of this Trump trial is a make believe bullshit deal. There's a thousand precedents already been set on that, depending on which side of the aisle you sit on. Why why is it such they, a they giant? Admitted to witness tampering, all this shit, but we're still having a trial. Why is know? it a giant deal when any president, I don't care if it's Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, picks a Supreme Court justice? Well, I can't do this. Gotta... No. I thought a judge was impartial. Why does it matter which way he swings on the aisle? Yeah. But it, because they're not impartial. Yeah, exactly. It's all fucking pay to play, even down to the local level. Yes, absolutely. Yep, it's absolute fucking bullshit, as Bobby Knight would say, and I agree with it. Oh, it's a shame he's still alive. I'd run him for president. It's all some shit. Yep, that's why I think blowjobs should still be three dollars. Well, honestly, if we could just get some prostitutes for every guy that's running for president or is going to be president, I think we could solve a lot of these issues. I think Because so. it always comes down to sex in the last 10 years, right? Yeah. Or 20 years. Bill Clinton's doing all kinds of women. They get shot in the back of the head. It's a suicide. <laughs> Bill, you know, Barack Obama's dating a man, but we're playing it off as a woman. 
George Bush, I don't think, had any issues Trump's on that. Trump's grabbing him so, by the pussy. Trump's, yeah, Trump's doing so. He's got prostitutes. If I had $10 billion, well, and I wasn't married, yeah, I'm probably doing some shit, too. Yeah, I'm not, not saying that makes it right. The Christian in me says that's wrong, and so I'm going to try to avoid it. But you got $10 million, you, it's a lonely night. You can try a little less hard. Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're just buying it and going on. Maybe you are. It's like a Ferrari. I kind of want one today. I'll take one. Yeah. You know. Joe Biden been sniffing kids for years, doing God knows what else. Showering with his own daughter. For Showering his own daughter. When, now all of a sudden, P. Diddy is the world's biggest ass rapist you can find. Apparently, you know everybody's coming out on that. Like apparently, anybody with any money cannot find it from their own home front. They got to go buy it somewhere else, or or force it on upon somebody else, which just boggles my little mind. I, I just can't wrap my head around it. Like, how do you end up in that position? I don't understand. Now, I understand if you're Bill Clinton, you're married to Hillary. I would literally do a train track yeah. while a train runs over it, over her. Yeah. I fully understand that. Yeah. But I think that's why people forgave him, right? Like, they're like, well, shit, I'd have cheated on her, too, because, well, it's Hillary. It, it baffles me that Stephen King, one of the most masterful writers in the world, can write some really twisted shit. Yes. Can't even come close to the U.S. government. He's like, yeah, fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> Can't pull it off with this equipment, Tony. Yeah, but Can't pull it you off. You guys have fucked this up enough. I couldn't even make this up no. with my twisted no way imagination. Around it. Yeah. I, I, just, I just don't understand it. I don't either. Every day. We need day, a, we need a house just, cleaning. House cleaning from top to bottom. Yep. If you think you're going to vote your way out of this, you are sadly mistaken. You're going to throw some tea in the harbor, grab your musket, and march your happy ass into the woods. That's the only way you're getting out of it. Yeah. Yep. As bad as I hate to say it. It's the way it looks. And they don't care. It's just blatant. Yeah. They, just, they don't give a fuck. No. They 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 have thrown so much stupid shit at the wall. I'm like, oh, that'll never stick. And it has. I'm like, well, shit. We can keep pushing it. Nobody's going to stop you us. You cannot tell me that all them fuckers, both sides of the aisle, don't get on TV and put on this big theater that, oh, we're doing this and we're fighting and we're feuding, that they ain't having $1,000 oh. steak dinners a night. Bumping each other, saying, "Could you believe what <laughs> the shit we pulled off today? <laughs> Could you believe? Can you it? believe they bought that shit? They've got Absolutely. side bets going on that says, i 'I'll bet you cannot pass a fucking law that is dumber than the one I passed today.' Yeah, bullshit. Yeah. And they're fucking, and they're doing it. And they're, they're pulling doing it off every day, every single day. Yeah, it just, it is infuriating. Yeah. And then yeah. we get the double fucking in Illinois. Yeah. Remember, things were going to change when Mike Madigan got. Thrown out of office. Yeah. As long as we can get Madigan out of there, God damn, that's, that's all we got to do. Things are changing. Yeah. Well, what's really changed change for shit? It's got it costs work. more money to license a fucking utility trailer to haul your lawnmower on than it costs to buy a Super MTA when it was brand freaking new. That's a fact. That is wow. ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. You can buy it, but you just can't haul it now in Illinois because it's too expensive. Okay, cool. Makes good sense. Yeah. Just look at the simple shit. Back when we were kids and the lottery was getting big, right? Like getting bigger. That was a big deal. The schools were going to be funded. I'm just going to so goddamn funded. We're just going to be raining money. Kids are going to be putting cap and gowns just made out of $100 bills. Top to bottom, they're just going to be, we're going to have some goddamn much money for the schools. These kids are going to be so fucking smart that we're just going to blow the Chinese up with our brain power. They're going to be thinking about it, just blow them off the face of the earth. Oh, man, the school's still broke. I don't know how every goddamn time I go to a gas station, there's 25 people in line for scratch-offs. We got lottery shit everywhere. We got gambling machines in every goddamn gas station, bar, restaurant. Like, to the point the bars are like, fuck it, we don't even sell beer here anymore. We just got gambling machines. Fuck, we don't, that's all we got. You just walk in. You, you, we don't even have food. We don't have gambling machines. We just, all we got is gambling machines. That's all we got. You don't have to push, pull, you pull the lever. People got so goddamn lazy they can't even pull the lever anymore. Can you click a button? Ooh. I mean, I guess. And, that, and that's the entire revenue for the town is 25 dipshits pressing this button. Yep. That's what we're doing. The, meanwhile, the schools are still broke. They still ain't got no money. Where'd it go? Oh, well, we sidetracked that money along with Social Security money. Welfare's never went broke. Social Security's going broke. The schools are going broke because we, we stole the lottery money, too, that was supposed to fund all that. But as soon as Ukraine gets back on its feet, that's what's going to help us. Yeah. Tomorrow when you wake up, does it make you two shits if Ukraine is doing good or bad? 
Me no. as a farmer, I kind of hope they do bad. I, the, Don't if, raise a fucking crop. If the Russians could do one thing, could they blow up that goddamn port where they ship grain out of? Exactly. Well, I need one thing from the useless Russians. They've been useless since Clint Eastwood stole that plane from them in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Firefox, he had to think in Russian. Yep. Apparently it was fast. <laughs> and they still haven't managed to do anything since then. Yep. And that's why the whole fucking thing's a charade. It's, it's all, all a charade. It's all Every a bunch fucking of bullshit. Benefit. It's ridiculous. And, and going back to your lottery point, how the lottery was going to fix the schools, what's the big fucking selling point of the windmills? Oh, look at all the money it's going to bring to your oh, community. Yeah. I mean, once again, we're going to have streets paved in gold oh, around absolutely. here when these windmills get here. Absolutely. Yeah. Just look at your lottery. We'll yeah. see how that works. Well, yeah. You know, to the to the local government, right? You know, hey, we, we don't want this, right? This is bad. We know it's terrible. Until it shows up in our town. Yeah. And we get the tax revenue yeah. from it. And then they can't suck the gold off the cock fast enough. Yeah, exactly. To, to put it, you know, put it right there. You know, oh, bring bring me some yeah. more of that shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. everybody hates the fucking windmill unless you're the guy that's going to get six of them on your property. L- look at the exactly. schools that are funded the most. You think they got the smartest kids? Because last time I checked the stats, that is not the case. Yep. Pretty sure there's an old song that says, if you got to stand for something, you'll fall for anything. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And pretty sure that's true. Yeah. And a bunch of those guys lie, just in case you're curious. I just talked to a guy the other day. They flat told him, well, you, this guy had signed up for him. He's like, really? That's funny. It's my uncle. And he didn't sign up for shit. Yeah. But they but they worked that Ponzi scheme. They make you uh-huh. think that the next door neighbor did. Yep. And then there you are. Those things don't make a legitimate kilowatt hour. What nope. a crock of shit. We have no idea if their motherfuckers are even tied into the power grid. Yeah. Do, we, I mean, do, you, do you know for a fact, Matt, for a fact, that that's tied into the power grid? No. Most of the time I drive by and they're off. I just drove to Kankakee up by Chicago yeah. last week. All the way there, windmills fucking galore. I swear to God, on my life, I put my hand on the Bible right now. Not a single fucking windmill turning. Mm, probably, All the way there. Probably too windy. Yep. Can't use them in the wind. Can't use them when the wind's not blowing. It's in that rare time where the wind's just breezy. Yeah. Yeah. Makes good sense. Yep. I get all these damn prisoners on horse walkers. I'd have them walking in a circle. I would do. Oh, these little immigrants. You want to walk here? Apparently, these motherfuckers have walked from Guatemala. Newsflash. We're hooking your ass up to this big thing. We're turning in a circle. We're walking your ass back yeah. to Guatemala. Exactly. In the meantime, you're making power on the U turn. Yep. You're on a giant treadmill. I find it funny that they walked from Guatemala, but as soon as they get to Texas, then they're in vehicles and they scatter. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you're can't just walk from me, Texas you're to Chicago. You're telling me now? that this I mean, bitch in, in in sandals walked from the four hundred and fifty two pounds walked from Guatemala. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I believe that. Right. I believe it. Yeah. Our politicians told us, Nick. I, I know it's true. They yeah, would not lie true. to us. Uh, they, there's it's no. True. Yeah, they are truth tellers. Yep. They're honest as the day is long. So what do you think, Matt? Did you really think you'd sign up for yeah. a, a podcast like this? Yeah. I mean, do you think this is going to go tonight, Matt? Has it been everything you wanted and more? It's it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. We we'll should have made time. We should have put out the warning banner ahead yeah. of this. Yeah. Maybe we should broke this into two parts: realty and then shit Matt didn't want to be a part of. Yeah. <laughs> this this has been this has been one of the longer podcasts we've ever had. It's getting yeah. close to like two hours, but. Yeah. We're we we got it off here for yeah, like we'll cut it off before we get too far off the rails. Yeah, we don't mean to ruin your business or yeah. wah wah wah. Yeah. yeah. Once again, stand up. If somebody don't like you, yeah. tell them fuck off. Yeah. That's the way I roll. Take your business elsewhere. Fuck you. Yeah. Fucking have a shitty day. We're dumping <laughs> tea in Lake Shelbyville tomorrow. We don't give a fuck. Nobody in this <laughs> podcast gives a fuck. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Where if you, you made it this long, hats off to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to tie this with, like, save it up for Memorial Day weekend when you're on a long drive or something. I don't know. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time.